Okay, Kathy, you want to go ahead? Good morning, everybody. Wow. Look at this. So many familiar faces and some new faces and some early risers out there on the West Coast. Um, welcome to everyone and thank you for joining us. I hope you've had your coffee. We promise not to keep you too long. Um, the idea is 20 minutes and we've got some, you know, exciting and interesting, um, I guess, information to share. And um, I'm Glad everyone's here. We'll introduce all of our speakers in, um, as we go along. First of all, as Amy said, Amy Robertson and I are hosting this event from Hearts and Homes for Refugees, and we're so glad that you're here. As Amy said, we are um, recording this event, and if you're not comfortable with that, go ahead and turn off your video. And please, everyone, check your mute buttons and make sure that you're muted. If you have questions or you have something you want to say, please put it in the chat function and we'll be following that and make sure that we get to your questions and um, answer anything that we haven't answered in the presentation. So with that, welcome to Day of Service, Martin Luther King's Day of Service. Um, this is sponsored by the Presidential Inauguration Committee and we are proud to be part of this. Martin Luther King inspired us to be better. He said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? And today we're going to tell you what we are doing, what many of you on this video chat, this Zoom chat are doing, and what we can be doing in the future. President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris echoed this whole sentiment in this videos that we watched yesterday. And I think you'll be inspired. And so Amy and I are going to be sending out that, those videos along with some other information you'll hear about in this Zoom. Thank you for joining us this morning. You are part of 2,300 events that are being hosted by nonprofits and volunteers who are expected to generate more than a half a million hours of service after this event. So thanks to the Presidential Inauguration Committee for creating this opportunity and for being committed to building back better and being there for others. With that, I'd like to introduce um, one of our earliest partners here at Hearts and Homes for Refugees um, was Catholic Charities. And Kelly Agnew Barajas was the first person who um, we um, put on our radar because Kelly is an advocate and works um, deeply with uh, refugees, asylum seekers, and so many other uh, Catholic charities in New York City. So with that, Kelly, um, she is going to tell us about the um, outlook for refugee resettlement and um, how we are going to be welcoming in this new administration and hopefully starting in 2021. Good morning. Thank you so much for inviting um, me to this, this special event. Um, as Kathy said, I'm Kelly. I work with Catholic Charities Community Services. I'm the resettlement director. And I'm just proud to spend a few minutes um, on this important day when we observe uh, Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King's life and legacy because his, his push to work for social and racial justice aligns with this proud bipartisan tradition um, of welcoming refugees to our country. And it's been something that um, over the past several years, we've, we've unfortunately been kind of suffering through um, a, a lack of attention to this, to this important issue. So um, as most of you already know, refugees are pe and, and people who seek asylum are fleeing persecution and they don't have um, a safe place left to call home. Um, and, and our mission is to serve refugees and asylees and help people reunify with family, start new lives, make sure that they can contribute and thrive in their new communities. And we cannot do this without partners like Hearts and Homes for Refugees, um, thousands of volunteers that are just multiplied through the effort that reaches out to um, faith communities, civic organizations, um, you know, people who can donate one hour or a thousand hours um, to, to helping people in their community who are, who are just arriving and need some orientation, need some help getting set up. Um, so we're, we're just so blessed to work with Hearts and Homes um, and, and the force that they have become in, in uh, Westchester and the, the whole New York City uh, region as well. Um, 
we're looking forward to a time when dignity and compassion for, for people um, guide the actions of, of our administration and the way that we treat refugees. Um, you know, we, we want this new approach. So the Biden administration has committed to set a benchmark for refugee admissions at 125,000 this year, up from uh, a current, right now, uh, historic low of only 15,000. Um, this will be very challenging because first of all, the federal fiscal year already started in October of 2020. Um, so we're, we're already well into uh, this fiscal year. And the infrastructure of the program has really been badly damaged um, over the past number of years. So uh, refugee officers who interview refugees overseas have been redeployed and reassigned. Um, so it's going to involve a, a heavy lift of um, some administrative changes. But I think that, um, you know, frankly, I think we're up for the job. Um, and as long as we have the, the will to really bring this program back, and I know that there are many who are waiting in the wings, um, just you know, waiting for their chance to invest again in this program, which has really been a crown jewel of the US uh, State Department's program. And there's Donna shaking her head. Hi, Donna. <laughs> Um, it's really something that we all can look back on with pride and, um, you know, just a sense of fulfillment at how many refugees we've been able to welcome and all the contributions that they've been able to make. Um, I was reflecting just this morning, you know, clients who have gone on to serve in the military, who are RNs, who are essential workers, who, you know, use their skills to contribute to our country, um, and which, which is also their country. Um, so we're just excited today to spend a few minutes, um, you know, sharing with you. I'm happy to answer any questions if we if we get to that um, uh, later, Kathy. I'm not sure if we will, but um, you know, we're also today talking a little bit about the National Day of Service and the work that we're doing, um, which might seem small to some, like collecting soap, shampoo, but these items are really, really needed by our clients who don't have the resources. Um, just imagine yourself if you could not purchase hygiene items to wash your hands during COVID. It's, it's really a scary thing. So we're so um, grateful that we're working together on this project and uh, wish you all a peaceful day and please stay healthy and safe. So Sam, will you talk a little bit now or go ahead, Kathy? You lead the way. You're muted still, I think. Thank you. I don't like being muted never mute me. Um, so what I wanted to say is before I introduce Sam, Kelly, to your question, um, we, um, we do have the will and the way to do this. And um, we will continue with all of the volunteers and the supporters, the people on these calls um, enable us to, to forge ahead and to rebuild the refugee resettlement program as community sponsors. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But one of the best partners has been Catholic Charities because they serve the populations that we aim to serve. And by partnering with them, we are able to bring more support in terms of volunteers um, to these populations. And it has um, been everything from food um, and um, uh, products and mentoring, et cetera, through our Helping Hands program. This um, Sam is going to talk about now is what we're doing between now and Valentine's Day, and it's called Love Your Neighbor. And Sam, please tell us why we need to be doing this and how it's going to work with you. And then Amy's going to go into the details of how people can actually get involved. Well, thank you very much for that introduction. Um, and I'd also very much like to thank the, inaug the inaugural committee and particularly Hearts and Homes Refugees as a whole for hosting this event and having just this space that we can share in this um, in such an important way. Um, so as you were mentioning, um, and as Kelly, Kelly mentioned, so um, to love your neighbor, we're gonna do a drive for toiletry and different kinds of uh, disinfectants and sanitizing items. Um, through our through Catholic Charities partnerships with Feeding Westchester and in coordination with the St. Peter's Daycare that we share a building with, um, we've been helping to hold ongoing food banks and distributions each week. 
Um, and because of that, in addition to the large amount of work we do with Helping Hands, um, oh, I'd also like to point out, I see a number of Helping Hands partners on this call. <laughs> Um, so through that, we've, we, it's given us a lens into this community and some of these most vulnerable populations in a little more uh, closely than we would outside of COVID conditions. And what we are hearing from them is there's a very increased need and a desire for these kind of sanitizing, disinfectants, and also toiletries like soap, soaps, shampoos, um, shaving cream, a laundry detergent. Um, these things, they, they sound very simple and low cost, but when family is facing such critical financial crisis, many of these families have lost their jobs. Um, they're facing, uh, there's increasing arrears uh, for, um, from rental uh, issues. So these kind of expenses are something that many are no longer able to afford. Um, this is in combination with the, the price of these items going up in different stores because of their scarcity. Um, so a number of these things together, we've really been hearing from the community how desperately these items are needed. Um, it sounds like a small thing when you talk about soap and shampoo, but if you don't have it, it's everything. Um, and so what we, with our, through this partnership and through the gracious uh, actions of Hearts and Homes for Refugees, we are going to, um, through our food distributions, be able to distribute these items to the neediest of our communities. Hey. All right, so um, thank you so much, Sam. And I just wanted to kind of, we're gonna send out all this information to everybody um, that has attended the event and signed up for the event. But I did wanna go over uh, while we're here together, what this personal products drive is going to look like. So it's running, launched today and goes through February 14th. And so with the theme of love your neighbor for Valentine's day. and the items that Sam has mentioned, you know, are really some basic essentials, uh, the soap and shampoo and disinfectants. Um, you'll get uh, by email a complete list of what those specific items are and they should be new and full size, you know, not the hotel ones. We can't use those for this um, drive, but um, then the way this is gonna work is that we're hoping that some of you will be motivated to um, become a, a mini drive hub. That, what does that mean? That you will set up a box on your front porch or in your community center or at your church or your synagogue and invite your own network to contribute to this, um, making those donations. Also, um, you, if you're not able to run a drive yourself, then um, you can contact us and find out where's the local, local uh, sorry, where's the closest drop-off point to you? And we can let you know. Um, we ask everybody that's considering setting up a drop-off point to let us know that they're doing that. You can email us at helping at heartsandhomesforrefugees.org. And that way we'll be able to point people in the right direction. Oh, you're in Mamaroneck or Austin. You can go to drop-off over here. We also have set up an um, Amazon wish list for people who want to do this from home, contribute from home. We'll share that link also in the um, email that goes out after this event. And we invite you to please share on social media about this event so that raise awareness about it. And you can also always donate through our website. So um, that is the, what's gonna come out in the packet. And then I'm gonna turn it back over to you now, Kathy. Okay, thanks, Amy. Um, so there are plenty of ways to do this, whether you live here in our communities in Westchester County or in the New York City area, or if you're on the West Coast, anywhere you are, there is a way to get involved in this particular drive um, because of our Amazon wish list. And um, of course, you know, Hearts and Homes for Refugees um, takes donations as well, and you can direct them to the drive. The more donations we get, the broader our reach can be. And New York City um, Catholic Charities serve so many people in New York City. So we will never have too much. Um, our challenge will be distributing, but thank goodness we have Catholic Charities and their ability to reach into pockets that we often cannot reach. So please don't feel like we'll have too much because we can never have too much. There's plenty of sharing to be done. Does anyone have any questions? I think we have time for a few and um, just wanna reiterate that all of this information will be sent to you. Um, the inauguration committee platform has created all sorts of ways to connect with uh, people who do sign up. So uh, you're not getting off easy, you will hear from us.
How about some questions? So glad to see you here, AKA and chapters. Good morning. Thank you so much for um, being here and doing this presentation. I would like to know in term, not only in terms of donating, I would like to know what kind of mentoring will you be sending information, how we can mentor perhaps there are those who are Creole speaking, French speaking, Spanish speaking who need mentorship. And if those of us who are on the call would also like to offer that. And again, once again, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Babette. I'll answer that by telling you that um, mentoring, language support, et cetera. These are all, all opportunities we can offer through our Helping Hands program. Helping Hands is a short-term support, offer short-term support, um, and it can be mentoring, it can be um, tangible items, it can be many ways to support a family that has been identified and who comes up with a wish list. We also have a Helping Hands ESOL program that we have launched several months back. Um, we are offering to match volunteers, people who have ESL background, language skills with um, individuals from the communities, the refugee asylum seeking communities. And we're working again with Catholic Charities, but we have a great team in Jane Dixon and Lisa Kiernan are leading this. Um, they both have experience and they've already started to enroll volunteers and will be matching um, as, uh, as needs come up and individuals who request to be part of this. So um, the best thing to do Babette and anyone else who's interested is to uh, go to, um, I, I would send an email to helping at hearts and homes for refugees.org. We're just gonna send all emails there and then we will distribute the different questions to the co-leaders and the people in charge. Thank you very much. I have a question. Uh, this is Melissa Cisco. Um, uh, do, is there um, someone uh, or a, a firm or someone who does pro bono work like lead for legal stuff? So for example, I've done some DAC application for students. I'm particularly concerned about the students and um, uh, helping to um, submit uh, documentations to immigration. So I'm wondering- Kathy, do you want me to take this one? Yeah, Kelly, that would be Hi. great. Melissa, thank you so much for your question. So um, my department doesn't directly provide uh, immigration legal services, but I have, there are several other departments within the Division of Immigrant and Refugee Services that are um, direct legal service providers. And actually, um, depending on your location or, you know, but we should definitely be in touch um, if uh, Kathy or Amy has your information because there's a um, a legal pro bono program, the Liberty Defense Project, um, as well as a few other opportunities depending on you know, your level of interest, but definitely that is something that we do um, work with pro bono partners on. Um, they take, as you're mentioning, like different levels of cases depending on their training and their comfort level. They could start with something like a, like a DACA application or they could work up to, you know, asylum applications or taking on a case like a special immigrant juvenile uh, case, for example. So I'd love to be in touch and put you in touch with the right people. Okay, that would be great. Right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I think there was a question in the chat, Kathy, about uh, from Putnam Valley from M. Mundy. Yes, I see that. Curious to know how many refugee families are you currently helping? I uh, so. That's hard to say at any one time. I mean, we're helping so many just by the donations drive. We had a winter um, clothing drive. Um, we provided coats and boots to over 500 refugees and asylees. Um, we had a school backpack drive in the fall. So, you know, at any one time, we could be helping um, through these drives, hundreds of refugees and asylees. And through our Helping Hands program, I believe we've helped probably, um, Amy helped me with the numbers, maybe 36 families, Lori are on this too, but you know, um, and in terms of resettling refugees, um, through in the last four years, I'd say we have under 100 refugees who have been settled in Westchester County through different organizations and groups called community sponsors. And one of the things that we wanted to talk about is community sponsorship. And um, so all of us gathering here all of us standing up and raising our hands to say, let me be of service to others. You are a community sponsor. And it is through that kind of community uh, convening that we can make a difference in welcoming refugees. So the programs that I've mentioned um, here today are part 
of the way that we come together and sponsor as a community, as volunteers, individually, faith communities, sororities, um, civic groups, families. This is how a community can sponsor and welcome refugees. So we welcome from the moment um, they arrive here, partnering with resettlement agencies like Catholic Charities and HIAS to resettle them, to hold on to them for a year to a year and a half, um, helping them integrate into the community, be part of um, the community, open our networks to new um, arrivals, and really doing what good neighbors do. Our Helping Hands program is a shorter term support for those that are here. And in 2021, both of these programs will hopefully become even more robust with the Biden administration's commitment to resettling 125,000 refugees. Mm -hmm. So I also want to say something about that because I think it's fair to manage expectations. There is no way that this administration will be able to welcome 125,000 refugees in 2021. We can't expect that. What we can expect is a change in tone and attitude and a reparation of the refugee resettlement program that was so decimated. And that commitment will pave the way for more refugees and, a, and an even better resettlement program. And community sponsors will be part of that, more so than they were when Hearts and Homes started five years ago. We will be recognized for the value that we do at the grassroots level. It's already happening. Kelly can attest to that. It was very difficult as volunteers to even help resettle. And now all eyes are on the community sponsors and the grassroots. So you're really joining a movement that is taking off and you will be part of something so important in history. And I, I know that sounds you know, esoteric, but it, it is really true. Community sponsors will be the future of refugee resettlement in this country. Don't see any other new questions oh. in the chat, although we do see a lot of connections and it's so great to have uh, all of those. Did anybody else have a question? We don't wanna keep you too long past the 20 minutes that we promised. I have a quick question. Yeah. If you um, take um, donations, will you be providing signage um, that we can use? Yes. So in the, um, the, the, the how-to kit that's being sent out by email, and I did put it in the chat box in case anybody was eager to get started right now, but there's like a little um, print at home label linked in that. So you could print out this label for your box or, and we will uh, be preparing like graphics that you can share on social media as well. Okay, thank you. And I just had a question about the rent. I don't know if there's anything that you can do, but is anything being done to assist people with, with rent? I mean, it just seems so like such a huge challenge. So many organizations are helping with rent and I'm gonna let Kelly address that in a moment, but Hearts and Hopes for Refugees um, created a program that um, uh, provides branded gift cards to um, many of the populations we serve. It isn't taking care of their rent, but it's offering um, gift cards that are like cash to be used in areas where they feel it's most necessary. So while we are not there providing legal advice and um, landlord um, you know, rental protection information any more than what the state provides to us, um, there are organizations that are doing that. And I'm not sure, Kelly, but you might be able to address that because I know the question comes to you all, all the time. I, I would um, actually have, Sam was gonna jump in, but um, I mean, there's a couple of different things, but between the rent moratorium and like Kathy is saying, you can work around the edges on some of this. It's a huge, huge problem as you're mentioning, Patricia, but go ahead, Sam, do you have a second? To um, yeah, I, I was gonna mention, so, uh, ca so Catholic Charities, this is predominantly for Westchester, um, but we are one of the few agencies that is providing ongoing rental arrears help. Um, it's us together with the Bridge Fund. Um, so to, to, put it, to put it simply, there is, there is a almost horrific lack of funding for how bad this problem is. The moratorium has continued and with, it, with different programs with the Department of Social Services and the rental assistance that normally you would typically expect uh, people to be able to get from the government. 
Um, many of these people are ineligible for different immigration status reasons. Um, there are essential workers that have, a, have been left out of this. Um, and the rental moratorium, while has given people a little bit of uh, relief, um, the arrears are just increasing. Um, so us, along with a couple of organizations, have been pushing. We've really been advocating for the local government and the state government at both levels um, to really increase this level of funding for rental help because it really is it's on the horizon and I'm pushing the moratorium more is not going to solve the problem, unfortunately, but we are heavily advocating. Um, we've already gotten millions of dollars allotted, but you'd be shocked how quickly and how small amount of people you can help um, when someone has a $2,000 a month rent and they're nine months in arrears. Um, so it, we, we are definitely doing that assistance. We're doing everything we can, but there is, we have not been given the resources at, to adequately address the problem, unfortunately. All right, thank you, Sam and Kelly. If there are no other questions, last chance. No? You'll be getting information. You know where to find us. Thank you for showing up today and for being part of this very memorable Dr. King Day of Service. Thank you all so much. Take care.